And as I said, there are a lot of definitions. I have them listed here. Looks like a lot, but you know, it's a big font. There's just a lot of them that we have talked, we will talk about, but some of them just need to know. Uh, show the block diagram for glycerophospholipid and describe some of its characteristics. So we have this over here. Um, glycerol with instead of three fatty acids, two fatty acids, then a phosphate group and an alcohol. And these are all, these we know are ester linkages in this, this pen. Yeah, there we go. These are all ester linkages. These two we knew were, and then we find that these are as well. So the main, the new thing here is that third branch is a phosphate group with an alcohol attached through an ester linkage. And these are membrane lipids. This is a, a type of membrane lipid. Uh, it's almost exclusively used for, for cell mem uh, as components of cell membranes. The, the big difference between it and a triacylglycerol is that it is polar. This part here, uh, the rest of this here is nonpolar, but this part here is the polar part. And so it's often drawn very nicely without all the atoms or even with the block diagrams as a polar head. And there's the phosphate and alcohol make up that polar head and if you I mean and your book does have uh, pictures of the full molecule and it's not as clear-cut as this but it's definitely functions in this way where there's a polar head and then you have the two fatty acid groups here that make up the the nonpolar tail so we should know that basic structure and the definitely the block diagrams Let's make sure I had it, everything on here Okay, then we have another membrane uh, lipid, sphingophospholipid. So we have that phospho, uh, the phosphate, the lipid part is what looks like the, uh, well, it contains the fatty acid and looks like the triacylglycerol. But then we also have the sphingo uh, part that comes from the sphingosine, which is this molecule here. Very long, you see this carbon CH2 in parentheses 12, so there's 12 of them in a row for a long chain. Then we have an OH group, an OH group, and a, an a, a mean group. So this is a little bit different. So we have uh, the fatty acid, as, so we have this platform molecule uh, of the sphingosine, as, as it's called, and working off of that is, is a uh, fatty acid. Then we have the phosphate group, and then we have an alcohol. Now the thing is, this fatty acid isn't an ester bond or linkage, it's an uh, amide linkage. And then these are ester linkages. So that amide uh, is uh, a little bit different, and uh, so there, there's a different structure here. But what we still have is a polar end and a nonpolar end with two, this uh, sphingosine is this long chain here, and then a fatty acid is a long chain, so we still end up with um, this structure where we have a polar end, which is the phosphate and alcohol. And then we have the nonpolar end, but instead of being two fatty acids, we have the fatty acid, and then we have the end of the sphingosine. And it gives the same basic structure that uh, is used for micelles and, or for a uh, cell membrane. So these are mostly found in the cell membrane, but myelin sheath of nerves, uh, in the myelin sheath of nerves as well, so cell membrane and making up the outer portion of the, the nerves. So that they're, cell, that they're uh, membrane lipids and they're polar. 
and uh, that we still get that same basic structure. Okay. Now we have a sphingoglycolipid. That glyco sounds like sh something dealing with sugars. Sphingolipid, so we should expect that it has a, uh, a great deal of the same structure as before. But in this case, we have a monosaccharide or a oligosaccharide. It can be very, a uh, very long chain of these. And this is a glycosidic linkage to the monosaccharide. And then an amide here. And because we can add on sugar after sugar, that gives it a, a longer form, a different structure. But it's still used in cell membranes. Uh, in, say, in nerve tissue and brain tissue. Uh, let's see. Oh, and actually, yeah, that's fine. Okay, and then, so you should know these each of these block diagrams, and you should um, uh, know the, the linkages to them, and then their basic uh, structure and function, just the general uh, function. Okay, and then the last thing we have here is cholesterol. So first, show the steroid nucleus, which is here, and we have these three six-membered rings connected together, and then a five-membered ring. And this is the steroid nucleus. And because it's so standard in steroids, uh, and that, that is what actually defines them, that um, uh, they have a numbering system for all the carbons. And you notice that there's only one number here because that carbon's already been counted as carbon five. But this is, uh, this is how we number those carbons that are part of that ring system. And let's see what else to do. So you should know, I'm not gonna ask you to draw the, in my, my, for my exams, I wouldn't ask you to draw the, the full steroid nucleus uh, well, I, I could have you draw the steroid nucleus, but uh, beyond that, like cholesterol, which would have this basic structure, I wouldn't ask you to draw that. But you should also rec be able to recognize this as well. Okay, so then they have, for cholesterol, we have uh, at carbon, at C3, we have the OH group. We have a double bond here between 5 and 6, a methyl group, a methyl group here. And again, I wouldn't ask you to draw this, but I would ask you to know this structure. If you see this, you should have know that what you're dealing with. You can see that it is takes it takes its form off of that plat platform. I don't even know if I can fit it all on here. See, yeah. But you should now. Now this is no longer. Let me back off a little bit more. This is no longer the steroid nucleus, this is cholesterol. And cholesterol, that OL, comes from that OH group that's here. So you should, I won't ask you to draw it, but you should recognize it when you see it. Uh, now the, again, this is um, found in the cell membrane, nerve tissue, and brain tissue and in all bodily fluids or virtually all and in blood plasma 100 mils of blood plasma and with your work in the lab you, you should be able to that's one of our that'd be one of our larger graduated cylinders uh, 100 mils of blood plasma contains about uh, 50 milligrams of free cholesterol And again, uh, you worked with uh, uh, in the, the lab, so 50 milligrams. We often work in terms of uh, a few tens or hundreds of milligrams. So it's something that we can definitely see. And so that's quite a bit that's roaming around in the body or used in the body in the cell membranes, nerve tissue and brain tissue. So you should know those functions and the basic structure.